morning and I finished roughing this little part in. I got some footage of that. I'll put that up now. I took a few passes on one side and then I turned it around and got the other side roughed in. Alright, so let's try to do a little cutting on this thing now with a 3,000 speed rate. Ooh, uh, the RPM's the same. Again, that's a little better, not, not as gruesome. Okay, so I want to rough this to one half plus a 30 seconds, so I'll see where I'm at now on that. 6.35. So after this cut, I'm going to need about a hundred. Thirty more. That's only fifteen on my dial. Let's see where we're at. Okay, I'm going to rough this down to five hundred. So I'm going to see if I can let you see what's on my mic here. Five hundred forty. That's that's close enough. I'm going to put a half 20 thread on that. So let's go ahead and finish this off and square this up. Okay, so now this is uh, finished on one side. So we'll turn it around. I don't really care, but it's not bad. So I'll turn it around. Wipe out the jaws and get it in there. Now this side is going to get roughed to uh, 5 eighths plus a little bit. So let's go ahead and rough that down. Let me go ahead and start a new time. All right. So let's rough this down. We can rough it down without interruption. I'll go back. Take it down one speed for the first couple of cuts. She's at. I want 625, maybe 650. I want 650 on this, it'll be good. And right now we're at 645. 644, that's close enough. I want it's going to finish at 625 and then it's going to be cut into a hex. So let's just go ahead and rough this in. Now that part is roughed in. I'm going to take it over to the bench and sit down with it and make up a drawing of what it's the finished part's going to be.
this uh, okay in, in order to cut with an end mill in the drill press you never want to put a you never want to put an end mill in the drill chuck that is in, in, in the machine on a Morse taper without a, without some kind of a um, draw bar on them. and this machine can't have a draw bar because the spline goes up through the pulleys so there's no way for it to have a draw bar so I thought that this guy could be converted it mounts on the bendle outer housing and then the drill chuck comes down in here I can put a car, a car this is called a cartridge type bearing with its own uh, hole that I can mount a small end mill in so even if it pulls down this has a thrust bearing right here I'll take this all apart and show you even if it were to pull the chuck out of the Morse taper nothing could go anywhere it would just stop spinning uh, I've got a let's start with this piece here this is a spindle now this I made for the lathe before I had my ER32 with a Morse 3 taper uh, I used to use this this will hold a 3 8 end mill it's got a set screw I believe this is made out of A2 tool steel so what I'll do is I made a brass bushing to go in here and then this part will drop through here and turn around so you can see it all right I'll take it focus it in a little bit okay so I got to move in on her a little bit now so then this will sit in the drill press this way and I've got this cartridge made it's just a bushing to get up because this is too narrow down here so I made this tapered thing up it's it's just like I said this is just prototype to see if it'll even work um, and on the top of it it has a thrust bearing it's a kind of thrust bearing that both races are are uh, are held together by an outer an outer uh, metal sheet metal sleeve so that'll fit right over there and that fits right down on there one one diameter of this this is the large diameter and the diameter that spins is is a smaller diameter so I have a I have a cut there for that to go onto that so uh, you probably can't see but this center shaft is sticking up just a wee little bit past that maybe a 64th past that um, uh, bearing so what I'm going to do is thread this little piece I'm making now this will have a half inch thread and this side will have a uh, hex cut and then I'll be able to screw that down and what I'll do is keep taking small cuts off of this uh, until I get just the right what I want for compression on that thrust bearing the thrust bearing will take up that that lateral force and then that uh, plane bearing down there will take up any axial forces of the mill cutting so if the mill pulls down it's not pulling it out of the chuck or pulling the chuck out of the machine it's going to be pulling this and then like I say I'll just put this screw that down into there then put the whole while I'm putting the whole cartridge on I'll have the chuck wide open and then I'll slide this up on there and this will go inside the chuck then I can lock the chuck and then make my final lock on here anyway that's the plan that's what I want to do with this right now to see if it'll work and then I'm gonna probably throw a 3 8 end mill up there and take some light cuts on aluminum and plastic and wood and see how it works it's not, it's not gonna be for rough cutting it's only gonna be for like if I get a do I have a piece around here um, things like things like this this is a piece that was sawed off so I sawed off in the saw uh, on the band saw and it's let's see if we can get a scale on there but you can see that that's that's not flat it's fairly flat but I can see light through there there's some places that it's down probably 50 thousands but all I want to be able to do is take a skim off of that and uh, this would be a way to do it now I can do that let me take this apart before it falls over
Now I could do this in the lathe, in the Atlas lathe, in the milling uh, attachment. But with the milling attachment, you don't have a full six or seven inches, whatever this is. This is uh, over over six inches. Yeah, I, I'd have to cut this so far and then move it, and and it makes us it makes it, it's not a true good surface. Where I could cut this entire length on my XY table, if I can get this to take a light mile cut safely. All right, this is the drill chuck. I have a couple of them here, out of the drill press, and I could, I could put this. This is a long 3/8 end mill, but I could put an end mill in there, chuck it up in there, and cut that. Especially this plastic nylon, um, but there's nothing to hold that up in there. If it comes loose, there's nothing to hold that in the chuck, and that would be two pounds, pound or two of steel flying at you with a razor sharp cutting edges on it, and that there's not there's no safe way to do it. You either have to have something like this that holds things in a collet. And it has a draw bar that you screw in there. This is for the lathe. This screws into the lathe. But then this would get a nut on it and draw it up so it can't fall out of there. But uh, I figure if I use this, if I use this, I can keep it from falling out. And if it, even if the chuck does pull out, there's no way it can go anywhere. This has a really tight grip on there. I've tapped it with a hammer to feel it. And it's just as solid as anything on the drill press. So I feel pretty safe going ahead and doing that, making this up and putting uh, putting the uh, end mill in a um, in the chuck. I don't think I could use this chuck because I don't think it'll go through there. This is a um, Jacob Super Chuck. No, it won't go down through the hole. This is the chuck that came with the. Uh, this is the chuck that came with the drill press, and it goes down through there pretty good. Now, what I, if it works out, what I'll probably wind up doing is buying one of these. This has a number three taper on it. I'll buy one with a number two taper on it. And then, it looks to me like I could actually cut across here and make up a plate so that even if this did come out, it couldn't fall out of there. The only problem here is... This has no tang on it. This is the tang here. Let me take that out and show you. This is the tang here. And this sticks up in a slot. And you can put a tapered pin in there and knock and knock it out. There wouldn't be any, there wouldn't be any way to knock this out. Except maybe make a, like a ball joint spreader to go in there and pull that out. Or maybe perhaps put a small stub in there that goes up into that slot. But uh, I have to be careful of that. Um... But uh, yeah, now the thing I'm going to do now is, now that I've shown you what, what all this is going to be, because some people were curious about it, um, I'll go ahead and finish this. I'm going to make, what I'm going to do first, I think, is make a drawing of it, half inch threads, and uh, I'll have to figure out how deep the flats are. Um, so what this will be is a hex. A hex, a hex with a 58 inscribed circle. So what I have to do is take the 58 inscribed circle and do the calculations to figure out how much I have to cut in on each side. That shouldn't be no problem. I always use this construction calculator. Construction Master 4. It's very old. They're probably up to about a 10 now. I don't know. But uh, I can actually quickly tell you what, what it's going to be. Um, 5 eighths is the diameter, so 5 sixteenths would be the radius, uh, 5, uh, 3 twelve and a half, 0.3125, alright, that's the radius, so that is the hypotenuse of a triangle, so I'm going to put, I'm going to make that the, uh, the diagonal on this calculator. The slope up the hypotenuse is called the diagonal. So I made that the diagonal. And um, so now I know two things. I know that it's going to be 30 degrees, the angle 
will be 30 degrees because this is 60 degrees so it will be split in half. Be 30 degree angle so I could put 30 in for pitch but I also know that since it's going to be cut right in half if you take if you take a if you take uh, uh, the radius uh, the radius of this will always be six times around there so that would so that would be cut in half uh, so I could put that in there so I'll take um, divided by two that equals 156.25 so then I make that as the rise right so now I don't know if you can see this all or not but when I hit pitch I should say 30 degrees and it does it says 30 degrees so now when I hit run uh, 0.270 that's how far from the center out to the hex the the run of that triangle you formed a triangle the radius is the hypotenuse half of the radius is down every machinist I think just about every machinist knows that sine of 30 degrees is 0.5 uh, because it most a lot of times when you want to get more accuracy what you'll do on your lathe is turn your compound to 30 degrees so as you're moving in you may take a thousands on your dial but the result of in towards the work is only half a thousand so you can double your accuracy that way um, so 270 is the run now out to the round metal is 312 so what I got to do is uh, I'll just make this negative I can figure out how to do that. I'll make that negative. We'll plus that to 0.312 now. Yeah, 312 and a half. 0.312 and a half and that equals so. So when I set this up in a mill, probably I'm going to use the um, lathe mill, the, the Atlas mill. I'll have to go in 41, and I'll write that down so I can have it there. I'll have to go in, and I could be wrong, but I'll redo the math on it, but uh, 0.0418 uh, and I'm just going to call it 7 that's so I'll okay so so basically what I'll do is put this back up probably I'll do uh, no I got to do this side first because I won't be able to chuck on the threads so I'll put this back up take a finished cut across there get it to 625 set it up in the in the mill touch off with the mill and then I'll get put the indicator on the carriage and I'll come in 41 uh, you might as well call it just 42 thousandths and then I'll I'll have a way to turn this six times so that I can do the uh, make it into a hex anyway that'll be next so anyway I have to thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy these videos